afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our online service with the Good Shepherd. Hasn't God been good to us? We have been in this lockdown for so many weeks. And when you think about it, our God has been with us. He has protected us. He has kept us. He has been watching over us. You know, Jesus said in St. John 14, that I go to prepare a place for you. And he said that where he is, there we shall be also. So we don't need to worry. We know that as Christians, that when we leave this earth, we are going to be with the Lord because he has promised us hallelujah. Just join me in prayer at this moment. Amen. Father God, we just want to thank you and bless your name. We praise you, O oh God, for your grace towards us. We know that it is because of your grace why we're still standing. And we thank you, O oh God, for everyone that was watching this service today. We pray, God, that your presence will be with us. We pray, O oh God, that you, you will touch the word. O oh God, you will anoint the word. Anoint your servant, Lord, as he comes. Lord, bless each and every one of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now at this time, we are going to invite our sister Jolif. She's coming just to share something with us at this time. Amen. Greetings, Good Shepherd. I firstly want to greet my pastors, Pastor Lamond and Pastor Davis, as well as our First Lady, Sister Bev. Greetings to everybody that is watching this online service today. I hope this finds you in good health. Pastor asked me to give a quick testimony or exhortation based on how I've been feeling during this time of quarantine. And when he asked me to do this, I instantly started to reflect back over the time that I have been in quarantine. I realized that I have done mostly reflection. Um, one of my last pieces of work for uni was actually a reflective piece looking back at the year so far what we have learned our growth academically and so i was already in a very reflective mood so naturally when he asked me to do that i just you know started to reflect and i realized that coming into quarantine i felt so detached from everyone, not being able to fellowship with people, not being able to attend church. I felt as though I was at a standstill, like there was nothing that was enabling me to grow. Um, I tried to read the Bible and be in the Word, but at times you feel as though that is limited. You're, you're limited to just what you can do by yourself and so I was beginning to feel like a bit stagnant like I'm at a standstill and as I got deeper into the quarantine time as I spent more time um, at home I realized that this quarantine time wasn't meant to um, make us feel isolated or alone this is meant to be a time of reflection it's meant to be a time to stand still and be in the word and be in God. We're often so busy with work, school, children, that we forget to just stand still and have that moment to focus on God. <clears throat> and so this has been a time for me to be able to do that. During that time, I've really recognised my growth, both personally but spiritually not just you know since becoming a christian but even in the last year the trials that i face now probably would have gotten a different reaction for me last year because i've been able to my faith has grown my trust in god has grown my trust in his word has grown and without times that this quarantine although it's been you know it's not been a very good time it's still a time that has kind of forced us to stand still reflect see that you've grown 
see it, the ways that you've grown. Right now, there's so many people going through so much. Could they have handled this a year ago? Could they have handled this if the world was normal? And the answer is probably no. We're, we're supposed to use this to reconnect <clears throat> with the Most High, reconnect with His words, reconnect with Him spiritually. You know, there are so many people that know the Bible back to front. There's so many people that know how to give excellent prayers, ones that sound brilliant. But having that and not being spiritually connected to God means that it means nothing. It means nothing to know the word but not have that connection with him. And this is the time when we are reconnecting what well, I'm reconnecting with him there's no distractions there's no you know I have to go to work or I'm going to put it off until tomorrow and yes I've had you know assignments and I've got the children but it would have been a lot harder to do that before now I have time I have time to listen when he speaks to us you know I don't want to be just that person that knows his words, but is so far from him. He, um, in Matthew 7, 21, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wondrous, wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me. I don't want to be that person. And me just being in his word and not living it out and not practicing it and not being obedient to him. That's what this time is for. This is our time to use it to get that closer connection that when he speaks your truly opening yourself to hear him um about two weeks ago or a few weeks ago i had a dream and i was so I, I was more concentrating on the circumstances around the dream in the dream i was escorted into church but i went up and i gave just a quick word on <clears throat> being prayerful and being precise with your prayers and you know praying with a purpose and a few days later, a friend of mine um, contacted me and said that they were having a problem with praying. They couldn't pray with their eyes closed. They could only pray with their eyes open. And so, you know, we started to talk about that. And, you know, I said to him what was in my dream and we read the word together. And I thought that was it. I thought that was it for that prayer, um, for that dream. And then pastor calls me to give this word and look, if I wasn't open to being obedient, I wouldn't have maybe not even remembered the dream or be willing to follow through with the dream. Although this might not be my calling, I'm not the best public speaker, but God wants to take me out of my comfort zone. He wants to use me and I've got to allow him to use me. You've got to allow God to use you, even when it's something that you've never done before, that you're not comfortable with. You have to allow yourself to do that. And this is the time when he's going to mould you. And you have to allow yourself to be moulded. You have to come to him and you've got to hear what he's saying and allow him to do that and stay fast in it, steadfast in his work. You know, the way we come into quarantine is not going to be the way that we come out. It shouldn't be the way we come out. We should have a stronger faith, a stronger connection, because he's talking to all of us. And all we need to do is take that time, go to that quiet part of our house and pray and listen. Pray with precision, pray with certainty, pray knowing what you're praying about. Don't just ask him to cover you. Don't ask him to bless you. Say to him how you want him to cover you. 
how you want him to bless you. Be specific in your prayer and then listen when he talks to you. This is what that time of quarantine is for. We are, uh, there's so many people that's going to feel like me that we were just at a standstill or we're no longer growing, but we are. We've grown so much and God wants us to see how we've grown. He wants us to see where we came from to where we are now. He wants us to say the growth that you've had, I'm going to use you with that growth. And you have to allow him to do that. He did not bring you or me this far just to leave us right here. If you feel like, uh, no, it's, I'm deaf. We are not at a standstill. We're in his hand. He is carrying us right now. But we have to allow ourselves to reflect and know exactly what he is he has done for us so far we all have testimonies we all have been through things that can help someone else none of us are stagnant none of us are at standstill we are forever moving forward but you have to trust in him and you have to listen and you have to be obedient in him in um philippians chapter one Verse 6, it says, Be confident of this, of this thing, that he which hath begun a good works in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He then goes on in chapter 2 to say, uh, chapter 2, verse 13, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He started a work in us. He started something and he's going to complete it. It's going to be for his will, but you have to be obedient. You have to be open. You have to make sure that you're using this time to stay connected to the Most High. Without that spiritual connection, we're going to be nothing. We can't just rely on the word. We can't just rely on our prayers or we can't just rely on the things that we know it is our connection to God that will see us through this. It is our connection to God that is going to help connect us with other people and <clears throat> bring other people to Christ and let people see Christ through us. It's going to be that connection to God that lets people see that. Without that, it's nothing. And this time, this quarantine, this is what we should be doing. Life after quarantine will be a lot different to life before quarantine and we have to be prepared spiritually. We have to make sure that we are here and he can use us and that we are strong enough and faithful enough to abide in him. That when he says something, we are ready to do it. That's the words that um, has been laid on my heart. That's... Um, we, we all have a purpose, we all have something that we need to do. It's about obedience and becoming spiritually stronger in our connection with Christ. I hope that blesses someone. It is so important that we do not forget our weekly prayer and Bible study. This takes place on Tuesdays at 7.30pm via Zoom. We will also be continuing on the study of James chapter 4. Do not forget to tune in. God bless you. And please remember, the good shepherd tithes and offering. Giving back to the Lord. The details are on the screen on how to do so. God bless. to hear from our pastor Lamont who is coming to share a short word with us right now. So receive him as he comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings to you all in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for being a part of our worship. And I trust today that um, the word will reach your heart in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your presence. 
Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. And Lord, we pray that the hearts will be prepared. They are ready to receive your word. We pray that you will bless this word now in the name of Jesus. I pray for your anointing. I pray that healing virtues, Lord, will come forth right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks today. Amen. There's so much that's going on around us that we need to just remain focused at this time. We've had the pandemic. We've also had the protesting. But thank God we can hold on to God's almighty hand. Somebody said that when around my soul, all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Now if we just spend a few minutes into the word of God. Hallelujah. And today I'm reading from just the first two verses from Psalms one two four amen it reads as if it had not been the lord who was on our side now may israel say if it had not been the lord who was on our side when men rose up against us oh read the third verse then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Let's read verse 4. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as prey to their teeth. Amen. Indeed, he went on to say, Our soul escaped like a bird. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, the one writer said, Where would I be? Where would we be if the Lord wasn't on our side? That's what the psalmist is saying here today. What a word. Where would we be if the Lord wasn't by our side? My subject to you today is, it's a question. Who do you have in your corner? Who is it that represents you in your corner? Who is giving you advice and assistance? Who is it that you've got to lean on? Who is supplementing you and assisting you? Who do you have in your corner? Now in the boxing ring, especially for a boxer who is susceptible to cuts and bruises and open wounds, it is imperative that he has a very good corner man, a good coach, and more of all, a very good cut man, somebody who can stitch him up. Somebody who can allow him to continue in the boat because it's either defeat most of the times, amen, or victory. And, and, uh, and if you do not have a good corner man, when you get cut, the chances are the doctor is going to be called in and you will be, you will be defeated. Amen because you will not be able to continue. Thank God today that he's in our corner. And if it had not been for him in our corner, where would we be? We can go through certain situations in life and we'll have to endure certain experiences. And we know that deep down, if we were by ourselves, we could not survive them. We would not be here today. If we were standing by ourselves, we would have been swallowed up in accordance with what the psalm is saying today. Hallelujah. David was, was very 
uh, enthusiastic. He was inspirational. Amen. He was encouraging the children of Israel to rejoice. He said, if it, if it had not been for the Lord. Now David was probably, some people believe that this psalm was written uh, in a context where he had defeated the, the Philistines or the Amorites or some other Amen, war or fight that he had with other nations. Amen. And he, he was then able to reflect and knowing that he did not do it by himself. Amen. But the Lord was with them. And so he encouraged Israel. He said, come on. He, first of all, he said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, exclamation mark. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. And he said, come on Israel. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. We would have been swallowed up. You ever try to cross uh, a water, some water which is infested. Uh, amen. By alligators. They will swallow you up. They don't even bite you. They, they, don't, even, they don't even chop you up. They swallow you up just as you are. Amen. And likewise, the situations around us, the world on the outside. Amen. Our adversary, the devil, if the Lord is not on our side, he will swallow us up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So David acknowledged that the Lord was on his side. And he encouraged his followers. He said, come on, the Lord is on our side. Had it not been for the Lord in our corner. Where would we be? Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord on our side? Israel rejoice, for the Lord was with us. Amen. You can lift your hands and give praise, for the Lord is with us. Amen. David himself wrote that in the time of trouble, God, amen, he shall give them victory. Glory to God in a time of trouble. Amen. In accordance with Psalms 27. Amen. In time of trouble, he shall hide us in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide us. He will set us up. Glory to God. We want to give God praise today. Amen. God will set us up. God cover up his children. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We need to say praise to God today. For God provides for his children. God make a way for his children. God protect his children. Amen. No wonder Jesus said, I will be with you always. I will not leave you comfortless. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is coming up and he will comfort you. He will teach you all things. He will bring things to your remembrance. I will not leave you comfortless. And so Jesus is saying to us today, amen, like the children of Israel, like David, amen, I am on your side. I'm in your corner. You're not leaving you by yourself. It's been very sad the past two weeks, what we've had to witness on the TV with in a, in connection with uh amen uh, floyd george floyd's um murder uh it has been so sad and i can empathize with his family and his friends and even the protesters we do not advocate violence we would not advocate the destroying of buildings and the fires and the rioting and but we are, one can only understand amen so we call for peace peaceful protests and i i've had first hand experience uh, I, I was i was um, set upon by four policemen i was driving with my son and they stopped us and they accused me of all manner of atrocities and then they made up some stories they handcuffed me took me to the police cells amen the, when i when i went to the station the, the charges that they were reading out or the alleged charge that they were le reading out to the custody um, sergeant uh, i was amazed i thought never i have never experienced that and i was supposed to have been the guilty person amen but thank god that he was in my corner 
Thank God he was in my corner. Glory to God, they made up a report and sent it to the CPS who then decided to charge me in court of law. Amen. Glory to God, but God was in my corner. Thank God he was in my corner. Thank God he represented me. Amen. It's so important that we have the Lord in our lives. Because in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our troubles, God knows just when to turn up. Somebody need to give God praise. The barrister that was appointed to defend me and represent me, their charges were 325 pounds an hour. I would not under normal circumstances be able to raise those kind of funds to defend myself. But God had provided the funds. God had provided representation. God was going to ensure that his child was going to go free. So he stood in my corner. Amen. On top of that, I also had a, a, a ministerial friend who was also uh, in the legal system and he was actually a magistrate. And, uh, and he came to court and represented me. I had another minister friend and, uh, who was an MBE and she wrote up a great long letter on my behalf. I also had a, a company director who turned up at court. He is the director of a national company and he had known me for some 20 years and he looked at the jury and he looked at the judge and he said, this is not the man. This is not the person that I know. This is not his character. Jury came back with a 12 to 0, amen, decision in my favor. When God is on your side, the jurors will be on your side. When God is on your side, even the judges will have to give you the verdict. It positively in your favor. When God is in your side, he will provide the finance that you need. He will provide all that you need. When God is on your side, you don't need to worry about the circumstances. You don't need to worry about the situation. If God is your defendant, if God will put whoever he needs, he will send an angel. He sent a multi-millionaire angel, angel to represent me. Thank God. Amen. I could not have done it by myself. Amen. But thank God. God is our help, our refuge. Amen. In the very present time of trouble. Amen. God will stand for you. He will never let you down. He won't allow you to be defeated. Our God is victorious. Jesus is a winner. And as a child of God, I become a winner. Praise God. David didn't look at the circumstances. David didn't look at big giant or big Goliath. Amen. When David stood up, he could only reach a knee, not even the knee of the giant. But God was on his side. Amen. We don't look to the bigness of the opposition. We look at the bigness of our God. Our God is victorious. Our God is enormous. Our God is a big God. And he's an able God. We don't have to worry. Goliath was coming with his armor. Goliath was coming defending himself. Goliath was depending upon his armor. But David was depending on the Lord. And I heard David, he said, Hey man, you come through with your sword and your shield, but I come in the name of the Lord. God is in my corner. God was in David's corner. God will be in your corner if you allow him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. He stands tall. He's in your corner. He's beside you. Ensure that he's beside you. Hallelujah. Ensure that you're on the right side of God. And God will provide. You don't need to fret. You don't need to worry. Amen. That bill for the court case came and came to 49,700 and odd pounds. 
God provided somebody to provide the sums of money, to provide the funds on my behalf. God provided somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. God will always provide. God will make a way. God stands in your corner. He gives you opportunities. He opens doors for you. God goes before you. Somebody said, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. And all I have to do is to follow. Somebody said, follow, follow. I will follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Everywhere he leads me, I will follow on. How many are prepared to follow today? I want to speak to somebody out there. I want to speak to somebody who do not yet know the Lord Jesus. Amen. I encourage you today to allow the Lord to be your guide. To allow the Lord to save your soul. To allow the Lord to lead you. Amen. And represent you. To stand in your corner. Allow the Lord to stand in your corner. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. You can look down your corner and Jesus will come beside you. Jesus will lift you up out of the color of sin. Jesus will make you free. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord your life today. Give him a try. Allow him. Give him a chance. He will stand in your corner. Do you have a legal battle? Jesus will stand for you. He's your lawyer in that courtroom. Amen. You have an ailment. Amen. Jesus will heal you. He's your doctor in your sick bed. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Do you feel poor today financially? Amen. Allow the Lord to make you rich. Amen. He's richer than anybody. He's richer than anyone. Our God is able to provide the funds. Amen. Even when you feel like you're friendless, He will be the friend. Friendship with Jesus. Oh, how sweet divine. Amen. Jesus is a friend of mine. Allow him to be your friend today. Allow Jesus to be your friend. I encourage you. I encourage you. I encourage everybody to make Jesus your choice. I recommend him to you. He will make a way. He'll open the doors. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Bow your heads with me just where you are today. Hallelujah. Invite the Lord in your life if you do not yet have him. Open up and say, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Jesus, Jesus, wash me in your blood. Call the Lord. Talk to him now. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, make me a new person. Make me a new person. Jesus, Jesus, wash away every stain. Jesus, lay your hand upon me. Lay your hand upon me. Change my life. Change my circumstances. Give me an opportunity, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Have problems? Ask God. Come into Him. Deliver me out of this, Lord, and I will serve you. You gotta mean it. Deliver me out of my situation. I will serve you. I will give you my life. I'll give you my heart. I'll give you my soul. I'll give you my body. Amen. Deliver me out of this sickness. Deliver me from this disease. Deliver me out of this court case. Deliver me, Lord. Deliver me. And I will serve you. Amen. And listen to me. God will. And even if he didn't, still serve him. Amen. Because the answers to your prayers are heard. And God will answer your prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe you, Lord. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you right now. I pray for every situation, everybody, Lord, who has heard my voice. My God, every condition, every circumstances. My God, I pray about them right now in Jesus' name. Come through for somebody. Come through for somebody. Touch somebody today, Lord. Save a soul. Save a soul right now in Jesus' name. Oh, God, oh, God, renew a brand new spirit. Renew, Lord, a renewal, a renewal. Let it take place right now in Jesus' name. Renew, 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 renew. In the name of Jesus, I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
now just where you are if you have given your heart to the Lord I want you just to believe him believe God God will come through for you amen get in touch let us know about it we are here for you amen the directions the addresses the information is easily accessible you can find us and we can direct you amen in the name of Jesus just let us know whoever you are wherever you are let us know we need to know I just want to say thank you for tuning in today amen remember to select the subscribe button and and you will be notified every time we do a service amen but right now just concentrate upon God hallelujah and give him your all in Jesus name amen